Welcome kart fans to the first ever Kim's Linden Estate New Zealand Grand Prix held right here in Hawke's Bay on the 14th of March 2015. I'm talking to the guru of restorations here, Graham Sutton. How cool is it to be here this weekend? Man, it's absolutely awesome. It's almost better than bad sex. It's got to be better than that, Graham. Yeah, it really is. Eh? Um, to come home for me, you know, I grew up here in the Hawke's Bay. We now live in Taranaki. We packed up eight carts and we've come over here and have a skid with all our Australia and New Zealand. Now I've seen your man cave mate, you've got about 20 carts on the go really, you've got chassis hidden everywhere in your workshop, but some of the restos that you guys have done here this weekend, absolutely awesome. Yeah thanks for that, we're a bit lucky, um, I grew up here in the Hawke's Bay and we got a disease that came across the fence called go-karting from a guy called Mark Jenkinson who's the uh, one of the supreme organisers and we thank him for that today. Anyway, we got into the go-kart, the vintage go-kart thing about five years ago and carts were available and accessible and cheap and no one wanted to know and they all laughed at us. They ain't laughing now because we're having a lot of fun finding the equipment, straightening it, making new parts and putting them together. And uh, we're proud to have brought eight here to share with our family and friends today. Well, this all grew basically from the, the classic Blossom event that we hold here in the first weekend of September every year. It's one of the biggest karting events in the country. There's a sign around the other side of the pits that says, in the 2008 Blossom, there was 25 vintage carts here. Fair to say it's grown a lot since then. Yeah, it has, and uh, I think there's a good reason for that. It suits a lot of people's demeanour, and not everyone wants to be a competitor. Most guys just want to go for a skid. Now you and I, we were younger, all we wanted to do was do laps. We didn't care whether we raced or went slow, all we wanted to do was do laps. That's all I'm interested in today, is finding the equipment, restoring it. You know, it's a tribute to those people who made that stuff, because without that, we wouldn't be here today, and the modern kids wouldn't be running Formula One. We wouldn't have Scott Dixon's or Greg Murphy's or any of the other people that have come through karting in this part of the country. You know, the late, great Ashley Stitchbury is another one that springs to mind that came through this um, whole thing. Without the people building this stuff, uh, we wouldn't be here. You know, New Zealand was a hotbed of home-built and uh, copied and New Zealand-made creations prior to 1987 when the import restrictions were lifted. So a lot of the newer stuff is all imported, mostly out of Europe, a little bit of American stuff. But the rest of the stuff prior to that was made here in New Zealand and uh, we've got a very, very rich home-built uh, industry that started here in 1959. Yeah, you're right there. The good old Kiwi number eight Y mentality back in those days. Uh, there's a lot of carts here this weekend that have got some serious history behind them. One, of course, that won the 1972 World Championship Grand Prix. Yeah, that cart that uh, Graham Harrison's got, he's had it for some years and it's well known amongst the elite karting people, I suppose. And uh, a young kid called Terry Fullerton from England, he went to the World Champs in the Vels in Belgium in 1973. And uh, as an unsung hero, I guess, the Poms always thought he was great, and he certainly was. He was my hero as a kid. And he went out and he beat the great Belgian driver, Francois Goldstein, who was on a trot for five world titles in a row, on that very cart. Not a replica, not a copy, that piece of equipment. And G.R. Harrison certainly got that as a, a collectible piece, probably one of the most you know, riches or royal carts in, in karting around the world. Um, it's fair to say that, and it is true that he was, Terry Fullerton that is, was the first guy who was a non-resident mainland European to win the world championship. And the next guy to do that was Lake Speed. And the other guy after that was a guy called Wade Cunningham. Only three people who never resided in Europe have won world titles. You've got a good memory for an old fella. I read a lot. I'm not a TV addict. I don't drink. I have a problem. I go to the shed and we work on go-karts. My partner Megan comes and we sit down there, we clean, wash, make parts, swear at each other and we try to make it all happen. Because at the end of the day, you know, we, we all leave this earth and I'm going to achieve as much as I can. I can't win nothing. I don't really care. But we're going to have a good time. They say a lady that's interested in motorsport is a rare gift from God. Absolutely, mate. When you find them, you need to bag a whole bunch of them because a whole lot of guys need them. Hey, always good talking to you, Graham, a.k.a. The Guru. We'll chat to you again later on in the weekend. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone, for putting up this weekend for us, and let's hope the weather gods play the game. They are at the moment. We're melting, but it's good fun. Thanks. Hawks Bay, mate. It's always good. All right, we're at the Old Farts uh, Christchurch race shed this time. Right, we're talking with George Haywood. How cool is it to be here this weekend? How cool. It's fantastic. It's awesome. Yeah, great. You had a shakedown in the cart today? Yeah, we've had uh, a couple of goes yesterday and one today so far. Yeah, really good. How's the body handling that? Oh, pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, finely, finely tuned body. <laughs> is that from the socialising last night or is that from the cart itself? Oh, no, the cart's, uh, it's, it, you get a bit of a beat up. It's good fun. It's pretty, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
tell us a little bit about the cart that you're driving here today. Oh, well. Um, Where is it? You got that many of them? No, I'm driving this cart here, which is John's, and he can tell you all about it because he's a good. I'm driving AP1, which is a, a 1980s cart built here locally in Hastings by the late Alan Pithy. And uh, it was never raced, it was raced as a single some many, many years ago. It took him about, well, 30 years to build, and we've had it for four years and we're running it as a twin. First outing was four years ago in Nelson. So the AP1 a number plate now makes sense to me, being Alan Pithy, of course. Yeah, you passed away just a few short, maybe one or two years ago, which is a shame. He would have loved to have been here. I'd love to have seen it going the way it's going. It's going really, really well. Mm. Well, we've got the sunshine out for you, because I know Thursday wasn't that great. And um, enjoy the weekend and talk a lot of bullshit tonight, probably. That's the fair word to say for the guys that are going to be there at the dinner tonight, and just enjoy it. Thanks very much. You're putting on a great event. Much appreciated. Thank you. Well, normally at a karting event, you see serious uh, setups with the big marquees and all the carts in there. Come and check out Mark Cowley's. This guy's got everything. He's got about four or five carts in here. He's got the big screen TV because he's probably going to watch a bit of the Formula One later on. He's got the Monster Energy fridge, which is well stocked, I've got to uh, tell you. He's got the couches here so you can have a lounge around in between his runs. But the best thing about this uh, setup that he's got here today is a spa pool. I'm not kidding you. Come and have a look. Mark Cowley has got a fully ready-to-go spa pool for everyone to jump into afterwards. Because I tell you, there's a few old tired bodies here this weekend. These carts are hard work on some of these guys. Mark's thought of everything. Well, we've got a rare piece of history here, 1972 World Championship winning cart that Dale Ineson has got. Dale, tell us a little about this cart. Well, it was originally driven by uh, Gary Emick in Hong Kong uh, for the United States. Uh, we've got all the paperwork with it and that to say that uh, it won the 200cc Grand Prix Super there. Um, it was then bought by uh, a New Zealander named Bob Hart who actually brought it back to New Zealand on sold it after racing it for a couple of months and then um, passed down a couple of owners and then I found it in pieces and restored it so um, yeah so it's got a history it's um, never been bent that's exactly actually how it raced in Hong Kong I think the only thing different was there was a different extension on the pipes so how far into the restoration did you go? It looks like the frame's been redone and repowder coated. Yes, yeah, just just um, repainted. I just crack, got it crack tested, and these are all original parts, Margay. You can actually still buy the Margay parts, brand new from that era. So cool to see the old upholstered seats as well because of course you don't see that anymore the drivers actually put the padding around themselves rather than this um i bet you know being a, a gp winner we know that it was fast i bet it's still bloody fast now it's not too ba bad it's uh it's up there with them uh my weight obviously handicaps me so my wife who's weighs about 45 kg last year we took it to australia for the world uh vintage grand prix there and she ran it we raced it for three days solid, and the only thing we did to it in three days was tighten up the fuel tank. Uh, so it was reliable, and I was, I was very lucky to have uh, a good mate come with us. So, yeah, we had, a, we had a ball. We can see on your sign here that uh, in 2008, at the Blossom event, when they had the first vintage uh, gathering, you could probably call it, yeah. you can see how much it's grown now to over 100. Yeah, no, it's really uh, quite impressive now. People are looking for carts to, you know, and they can find them. There's no getting away from that. Uh, we have our detractors and that, so, but uh, we all plot on and find all the bits and pieces that we need. We have quite a good network amongst, the, well, we'll say us older blokes, that if someone's got a part that another one needs, well... We swap over, no money changes hands, and we're all good mates from that era. Um, the weekend's going to be good. There's going to be uh, plenty of socialising going on tonight, and we've already said it before, there's going to be a lot of bullshit spoken, no doubt. Oh, I tell you what, that's what makes it, eh? Stories get, as the night goes on, the stories get bigger and bigger. But, yeah, no, we have a good time. There's a lot of camaraderie amongst the blokes, you know, and uh, it's really good.
And it is an affordable pastime. I mean, you can do a restoration for under two thousand dollars, even if you wanted to buy new parts for them. Yeah, no, that, that's a, that's a fact. Uh, we've just restored this other car to my wife's a, a twin. We just had a little bit of an incident out on the track with it, but uh, we'll get it going again. We've got enough parts here to get it going. I uh, enjoy your weekend. I'm sure you will enjoy the uh, liquid refreshments tonight as well. And uh, thanks for coming up. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Well, we've got one of the legends of New Zealand kart sport racing here, John Hamilton, a 32-time New Zealand champion. But what I'm most impressed about is the fact he still fits his old racing leathers. Good to have you here in the Bay. Thanks, Mike. It's not quite so easy to do the zip-up, though. <laughs> but you can. That's the main thing. Just, yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's good to be back. Uh, first drive I've had for a long time. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, hard work. I'm sweating already. <laughs> You get a few runs today and tomorrow, so fair to say you might lose a couple of kilos before the weekend's over. I might not necessarily do all the runs either. <laughs> no, it's very enjoyable actually. It's good to be back and the camaraderie of everybody and uh, it's good to see some of the old carts. Yeah, really loving it. Thanks. Great to see WKS embracing the vintage karting scene as well. Mm, well, I guess we've been around since those days anyway. So yes, that's right. It's, it's good to be here. I just heard you had a bit of trouble with the number one cart. Yes, uh, the engines... Uh, probably a big end bearing gone or something like that and that's what you get to you know these motors have been under the bench for I don't know how many years but uh, a lot and uh, although we pulled them to bits and rebuilt them we didn't replace things like that because we're not after the, the you know the last little bit of performance and maybe it's, we've just been caught short on that one but we'll find another motor and uh, Tiff will be running don't worry. Do, do you reckon it might have been Tiff just putting a foot too hard on it? <laughs> no no I can't blame Tiff for this one. <laughs> Right, Tiffany, come over here. We want to have a chat with you as well. Tiffany Chittenden, the only lady driver to win a British championship in kart sport racing. I bet when you won that title, you didn't realise that a few short years later you would be over here at a vintage Grand Prix. Uh, no, uh, that's for sure. Um, but it's great. Um, it's been great to obviously race in New Zealand in the modern day stuff, but also um, this has really picked up at home as well. So um, we've been trying to, um, when, when we knew we were doing it, I've rang my dad and s tried to ask him what he had left in the garage but um, I think um, everyone has stole stolen all the old stuff off him already. So no, it's great to be here and it's 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 kind of nice to be at a meeting where you don't have to worry about championship points and um, and it kind of brings the fun back into it. No time schedules, it's pretty rough. Yeah, for sure and everyone's having fun and um, yeah, I don't know, I wouldn't agree with the time schedules, Brucey still still on at us about being there on time so yeah, it's, it's just great fun. You need to have some fun because in three weeks' time you're going to be racing in the New Zealand Champs in Manawa too. Yeah, for sure. So it's an, a new track I haven't been to, um, but um, I've got a lot of work to do. We um, haven't had a great start to the season, so yeah, for sure that's when we really need to uh, get our serious heads back on and uh, try and catch up with the likes of Ryan Urban. Yep, I hear you there. He's very quick. He's uh, skidding in a retro cart today as well. Yeah, he is, and it's good. Like I say, it's good when normally all we're trying to do is uh, get one up on each other to, uh, although obviously still want to beat him this weekend, but uh, yeah, it's good to everyone have fun and you're allowed to talk to each other and uh, look at each other's carts, whereas normally um, it's all very sort of cloaks and daggers, I guess. Well, you'd have to tell all your fa uh, family and friends back in the UK to keep a look out for the link on YouTube because they'll be able to watch this early in the week. Yeah, for sure. My dad's actually at a, uh, a vintage cart meeting at home this weekend, so um, we've already started to trade uh, pictures. Cool. So, uh, yeah, it's good, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see something of what I do over here. Well, a vintage meeting in England potentially would be huge. Yeah, it's definitely picked up, and obviously the likes of Terry Fullerton, and um, uh, I mean, some of the engines that are here with Grice stickers on, um, they're still around back home, and, you know, they've, they've moved on to... Um, as the market's gone, they've moved on to Grice now does Rotax engines and things like that, and they've had to move into that area. But for sure, I think the love is still with these engines, you know, where noise didn't matter. And, yep. well, as, as noisy as you could get was, was best. And, and uh, yeah, so my dad's, you know, hanging out with the likes of that. So it's, it is really popular. I mean, John's on an English-made cart. Um, so it's good to have the two countries merge. Awesome, always good talking to you and um, good luck in three weeks' time as well. Thank you. We're going to talk with uh, Matthew wherever he's gone. I think he's hiding over there, Matthew Hamilton.
himself, I think a 10-time New Zealand sprint champion from memory. I did look it up. I'm pretty sure it was 10. This is one of Matt's first ever carts. Tell us a little bit about this one, Matt. Uh, yeah, so this is a midget cart uh, built by Warren Corbeck in Christchurch for Mark Corbeck, and then uh, it was my sister's after that, and uh, then mine, yeah. So we managed to find it and restore it back to how it was when I had it, so it's good. What year was that when you started racing this one? Uh, I must have started in about 90, 1990, but uh, it was built in about 84, so... Um, yeah, and I think uh, Daryl Crichton, it was uh, his first car he drove too, so it's got a bit of history in the Christchurch Club, and you know, it's good to have it back and hang it on the wall. And, hmm. Now, are you going to be defending a title in three weeks' time in Manawa too? Yes, I'm in KZ again, so um, yeah, won the last two years, I've been fortunate enough too, so try and make it three in a row would be really nice, but um, yeah, I haven't raced uh, since, you know, in New Zealand since um, uh, last Nationals, so uh, we'll see how we go, see how the fitness goes, yeah. So you've had a full 12 months off from here. I know you've been overseas, but you haven't raced at all. Yeah, I just did the three meetings overseas and that was it. So, yeah, it'll be a bit rusty, but um, we've got a couple of days of practice in uh, Manawa too. So, um, yeah, we'll give it all we've got. Bouncing around today in one of these vintage carts will probably help loosen up a few muscles. Yeah, it definitely does. And having to get out and push start them, uh, you know, it's certainly, uh, you know, you have to be quite athletic. So, yeah, no, it's good. It's uh, great fun and, um, you know, just back to basics and the carts are light and, you know, a bit of a handful to drive. So, yeah, it makes it good and everyone's out there just having a good time. So, hey, Well, all the best with defending that title. It's great that you brought all these carts here for us and um, have a great time here with the WKS Cart Store team. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Enjoy being here. Cheers. Right, we're back in Mark Cowley's pits. Mark, we've already um, raided your little area here and filmed everything before and talked about your, your spa pool. Did you need that for cooling down after the tuning runs, mate? Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty hot day today, Mike, so we um, need to need to cool down again. Very humid here today. So, yeah, hook space turned on the good weather. It certainly has. Um, you've got a good range of uh, vintage carts here. Tell me a little bit about them. OK, this one here is a uh, 1987 Kiwi cart built in Palmerston by um, Kiwi Carts by Graham Voss with a uh, Rotex uh, rotary induction engine, the slide carburetor. Uh, this one's a 1986, same model cart, but a year earlier, um, with a Yamaha KT100, both 100cc motors. Um, the rotary induction one's quicker than the, than the KT, but both good fun to drive. Now you started racing in the 80s, was it, as a junior? Yeah, as a junior when I was 12, yep, uh, late, late 70s actually, so been doing it on and off for... Competitors from back then? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of familiar faces here that haven't, uh, haven't been around for a long time, so. Yes, such as? Uh, Greg, obviously, uh, oh, there's heaps of guys, Drakey, uh, Graham Voss is, was obviously right back in early on in the days, um, Hamilton's from Christchurch, Kevin Nairn from Auckland, so a lot of the old names that have, have stuck to the sport for a long time. Now, we mentioned before that uh, back in 2008, when they had the first vintage karting uh, gathering, you really could call that. It's grown now to be what it is. It was 25 carts in 2008. It's over 100 now. Yeah, yeah it's got very popular. Um, it, it, it's relatively cheap compared to the racing. Um, it, it's easy and it's fun. So that, that's why it's working um, and that's why it's just growing. Every time we have a meeting, there's just more and more people coming on board and rebuilding carts. So it's really taking off. It, it ticks all the boxes. Um, you know, it's all about having fun and that's, that's what we all do. So. Just talking to Tiffany Chittenden, she was saying there's actually a big vintage karting uh, meeting in England right now, happening this weekend as well, and her father's at that one. Okay, all right, oh, worldwide. Taking it is, it is worldwide. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And it's good to see, you just looking on the grid over there before, um, you know, all the old engines and stuff that would have been lying around in people's, people's garages are now back up, rebuilt and running, which is great, you know, to see them all going again, so... And a lot of them here were actually uh, turned into backyard hacks and had a lot of bits and pieces welded on them. Guys have stripped all those parts off, re-powder uh, coated them, turned them back into immaculate looking restorations. Yep, yeah, um, some people put a lot of work in. Um, a lot of them went to, to grass cutting, like you say, and they, and they sort of butcher them a bit, so it takes a lot of effort to get them back to original. And most of the guys that are rebuilding them are, are really fussy and pedantic about getting them back to exactly how they were, which is great. You've had a couple of uh, runs out there today. How's the body feeling? Yeah, the body's not what it used to be, Mike. Um, I'd say the body's more than it used to be, mate. Yeah, you're probably right, mate, but it's still fun. Uh, four laps feels like 40 now, so, but yeah, it's all good. As long as we're doing it and having fun. Hard work in these old carts because they're a lot narrower than what they are now, so definitely a lot more twitchy. Yep. Yeah, you definitely get a lot more feedback off the older carts, and um, when we were running them, the, these tyres weren't, weren't available, um, so the tyres offer a lot more grip, so you're definitely getting biffed around and a lot more G-force than we used to back in the day. So hard work for the old fellas. 
Oh, well, thanks for chatting with us, Mark. We're going to go and have a chat with uh, a guy that you're actually helping to crew for today as well. Yep, yep, yep. Go and have a word. Thanks, Mike. Well, we'll have a chat with Greg Murphy. <laughs> Let's sit down. We might as well make take advantage of these couches, Greg. They smell a bit. Ah, oh, that's because of Mark Kelly's. <laughs> How cool is it to be here this weekend? Oh, it's it's entertaining. There's no question. It's great to see uh, so many old faces from back in my day as well who are turning up for a bit of a laugh and and uh, enjoying the sport, you know, for what we remember it as. And some some great equipment here that really, when you drive it, you know, could be brand new, could be current current spec. Great sunshine. We're sitting back on a reclining chair here, just enjoying the meeting. It's pretty relaxed. Yeah, it doesn't get uh, more relaxed than this, really, but. Uh, that's why there's so many people here because I think um, there's uh, all, you know a lot of faces from from my day and um, you know which is a number of years ago you know enjoy this kind of karting it's um, it's got a, it's a pretty serious sport out there uh, these days a lot of a lot of um, young guys and girls um, with you know ambitions to go further afield and it's it's a it's a serious game so it's nice just to be able to take it take it back a few steps and enjoy a uh, yesteryear. I don't think you can get any more relaxed than Mark Cowley anyway. Oh, he can be pretty serious sometimes, you know. He's, uh, he, uh, you know, when, it, when he needs to be, he gets, uh, gets a bit more serious than what he is at the moment. But, um, you know, I think there's a, be able to take this kind of set up to a, a, a normal race meeting, um, it might, might not quite uh, fit in just as good as what it does here. Now you started karting around the age of eight years old, just you and your dad taking the cart to the racetrack. Your dad even raced at the beginning as well. And that's when, of course, we had the Waipawa track going at the same time. And I had a look at that last week on my way back from Taranaki and it's getting pretty overgrown, but it was a good track in its day. Oh my God, just, um, you know, if, you know, thinking about all the rules and regs that we have these days, um, you go back and have a look at uh, Waipawa, there was, a, there was a pond in the middle of that. And um, you know, I think some of the bumps used to, you know, send the carts completely off the ground, and it was uh, it was pretty entertaining. But you know, that, that was real grassroots stuff. Yeah, and you were racing for televisions and prizes back in those days, not just so much trophies. Yeah, well, it was a few years later than that. But yeah, you know, there was, you know, there was all sorts of things that, um, you know, uh, you used to, yeah, used to go racing for back in the day. And it was all about the sponsorship that people would provide for for an event and. Yeah, one TV that you know, that I won um, was quickly sold to pay for an entry into the Shell Scholarship back in 1990. So um, I was looking forward to having that up on my, you know, on my dresser at home. But um, anyway, it worked out all right. And of course, the late great Ashley Stitzbury was part of that uh, scholarship run as well. Well, Ash was part of this club, and you know, him and his dad Paul were, you know, again just like myself and my dad um, into it big time. And used to do a lot of travelling. We used to travel around the place a lot together and race we were very competitive back then you know the two of us you know had a few dingles out on the track here in Hawke's Bay and um because we were you know we were f very competitive but um it was good times and we you know did a lot of traveling around the country racing our carts and doing those things and you know those days were those were great days dingles that's a bit of a pc term for Shunt. smacking crap out of each other yeah yeah no we you know no no side pods back then it was just nerf bars as these carts have got and you know, it was pretty easy to get a front wheel entangled in, inside a, you know, a nerf bar there and end up uh, uh, carting yourself uh, off to hospital or, you know, um, to the doctor on Monday to get a, get an ACC form so you could claim claim on your helmet. You know, that was that was uh, that was yeah. that was about the only benefit of it. You used to be able to get a new helmet. The good old days. And of course, that was on the shorter track too, before the extension was built. So the, you watching this on YouTube, you'll see the uh, extension and where the old circuit was back in the day. It was a very quick little track, that. Yeah, it was pretty short. I mean, when you, you look at um, uh, a lot of kart tracks, they used to used to look a lot, a lot different to what they are now. There's been a lot of extensions around the place. We're pretty fortunate to have the quality of uh, kart tracks that we've got in New Zealand. Yeah, definitely the standard of our tracks has improved immensely in the last 10 years. Um, the cart's probably twice as quick as that, and so many adjustments and things on a modern cart. That's the beauty of these pre-90s, is that there's probably a third of the changes on these that you could make to a modern cart. Yeah, but the, the speed, you hardly tell the difference in the speed. I mean, we're running different engines, but you've got, you know, uh, a KT, which is still being used today, and on different chassis, and, and realistically, you know, if the, one of them's um, a second a lap faster or half a second a lap faster, I mean, so what? I mean, it's uh, yeah, they've become very complicated, but I mean, they are works, you know, just absolutely beautiful pieces of engineering. Um, these days, the quality of the um, the builds and all that is is pretty pretty awesome. But um, you know, we want to get 
uh, more people back involved in karting at a lesser level, you know, in that club level, and and uh, make them feel that uh, you know that they don't need to be spending you know some of the money that some of the the guys do that are fully committed to karting and travel around the countryside you know every weekend. You know, there's there's the other side to karting, which is you know the social side, and which is what you know we we loved about the you know the time we spent back in the day doing it was that social side and and enjoying the club environment and those kinds of things too, and, and hopefully we can you know that can that can come back a bit also. Unfortunately, with the um, with the road laws around now that we have, the social aspect of all motorsport has really sort of taken a hit, speedway included. It's not quite the same as it used to be in the club rooms 30 years ago. No, but that's okay. They can still be it can still be enjoyable times. You know, everyone's got to work out there the way they go, go and enjoy themselves. Doesn't matter if you're going um, out out to a pub or out to the club or whatever. You know, you still got to you know be smart and sensible about it. There's always ways around things. So you know, that shouldn't be something that um, stops people from uh, enjoying themselves and becoming you know coming out here and and um, um, you know get involved in motorsport. Hey, well, enjoy the rest of the weekend, Greg. I'm sure you will, and enjoy having a skid round in the 51 cart. It's good that Doc Murray's kept that for you. <laughs> well, this one's Mark's, but um, uh, oh, you got that—that that one's Mark's. Okay, Mark's. yep. So I'm, uh, I'm having a go on that one. I don't know about the the one that Mark Doc's got. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't even know if it's uh, running. Well, that's the 05, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Hey, all the best anyway, and have a good weekend. Cheers, mate. Right, this time we've got Dave Neathy from Napier, just one of the local drivers here. Dave, quickly tell us about the cart. Well, the uh, cart I picked up uh, a few years ago and have uh, done it up. It's a 1974 uh, Zip Shadow and it's got a TT22 Pirella on it. Sounds awesome, mate. we better let you get in the cart and get out there for tuning. Well, we're talking with one of our ex-international mate. Yes, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, it's a lot of fun. Apparently, there's about 120 others that are enjoying the, this festive occasion. <laughs> they certainly are. Now, hey, look, you got your one of your original sets of leathers on. I'm impressed by that because it's pretty warm here today. Yeah, well, it's all, everyone's in meltdown today, and yesterday I think it was even worse. But we're having to tolerate it. We've well, got plenty of fuel, and we'll be fine. Now, tell us a little bit about this cart because you actually raced this overseas. This is a 1976 uh, BM uh, with a BM engine, uh, raced in Hong Kong, 1976 with John Hamilton and Chris Layden at London, um, and we had a, probably the most successful Kiwi contingent that never went to Hong Kong. We had lots of fun, and um, we brought home a little brass. That's always good. Now you haven't actually sat in a cart for about 30 years, is that right? I had a 30-year gap with not even getting into a cart. It was hard to do, but business and family were took president. Um, but now we're back into it. Thanks to Mark Jenkinson yeah. and a crew, Phil Davies, who we've lost. Yep. Um, there's a team here who uh, uh, have got this festival going, and it's is unbelievable. It's as good as the Australian um, uh, 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 festival and as big. And I'm sure it's going to grow even more. Now the smile on your face has been a mile wide since you hopped in this cart, but uh, how's the body handling it? Um, uh, I've got a fair bit of help from our Poor Health Centre, thanks. <laughs> I come from Nelson. Yeah. So uh, yeah, no, it's hard work out there. It's, and by the end of the day you know you've done a day's racing. Uh, no, I'm sorry, demonstrating. Yeah, demonstrating and parades, I think they've called it, but hey, we know it's racing. <laughs> oh no, it's parading. <laughs> You're going to stick to your guns on that one, aren't you? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got to not go too far out of line with the politics. <laughs> hey, enjoy the weekend, enjoy the socialising aspect of it tonight, and just have a lot of fun here in Hawke's Bay. All of us will, I'm assure you of that. It's, it, it, the camaraderie is unbelievable. Everyone's helping one another and everyone's got a smile on their face. That's what it's all about. Honk Perry. Well, it's fair to say that this New Zealand Vintage Grand Prix wouldn't be happening without this man sitting down right here, Mark Jenkinson. Unfortunately, a little bit ill this weekend. The health's not so good, but Mark, on behalf of everybody here, I'd just like to say big thanks for everything you've done to get this going. 
Yeah, it's great to see everybody here in the, um, the atmosphere. Uh, it was just wonderful, and, and I presume that it is today. I've, I've um, been at the medical centre and what have you, but I, I can't imagine why it would be any different to what it was yesterday. Now you're a former New Zealand champion, so you've, you've been around the sport for a fair few years. I know you won titles in the 70s. I don't know when you started karting, though. Yeah, I, I started in uh, 1968, so I'm, I'm, I'm the same age as the club. In, in, in 2017, I've done 50 years, um, and I did win a title in the 70s road racing, and then I won um, two back-to-back -back 250 uh, gearbox titles at sort of 79, 80. We know how far karting's come from those days, and especially the size of the circuits. You know, there's no, no short tracks anymore. In fact, Hawke's Bay is probably one of the shorter ones in the country. Yeah, well, that's something that sort of came, and I, I think it's like the um, evolution of karting. And I don't know whether it's entirely necessary, but it, it sort of became, you know, the rules that, you know, to run national events and things like that, your tracks had to be bigger and bigger, and the, the lengths of the straights had to be longer and longer and whether it really makes a hell of a lot of difference I don't know because at the end of the day you know passing's done in corners not on straights but um, you know we you know it doesn't really matter we, we, we'd run around in a saucepan and we'd be happy with these things. Carts have, uh, have got a lot wider as the years go on we've now running eight meter minimum with tracks that's because of the, the amount of wide track on these carts I think you're running at 1250 is that right and the modern carts up to 1400. The reason we, we, we put a limit on the um, rear axle width was that up until this meeting, all of the meetings that we've run vintage carts at, all the vintage carts have been mixed together. So you could have um, twin engine carts and you could have single engine carts um, and the twins were generally bigger and things were a little bit cluttered and so what we did was... Um, we put a width on it so there was more room on the on the track with the difference in the speeds, the difference in people's ability, just to mean there was just more room for everybody to get around nice and comfortably. And we've seen a few of the runs this morning already. A lot of fast carts out there. Well, in reality, there will be carts here today and that would be um, especially the 130 Rotaries and there's, there's about four of them and with a top driver in them like if Michael Dickens gets in one of those 130s he's a small guy these carts are so much lighter than the modern carts because they have all the plastic and what have you on them um, I wouldn't uh, imagine why we wouldn't have lap times quicker than the modern carts with those you know specialist carts of course this is demonstration racing what we call parade racing um, no no times at all so we're never gonna know that are we no, and, unless somebody, you know, went out and, and, you know, I've got a stopwatch, you can go and put it on one um, just for interest's sake. But the, the parade is generally the uh, group that want to wear the old uh, driving suits and the old open face helmets, and they're not allowed to pass each other. The demonstration um, runs start from the pits, uh, fastest to the front as best we can organise, and they go out and um, the, 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 the run starts from when they leave the pits and it finishes with a flag at the pits. You know, to, 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 to have some um, dispensation as far as driving apparel and things like that are concerned, we had to have vintage karting as a non-competitive sport. And it, it works fine. Everybody's happy. They want to go out there and have a run. If they find somebody, um, you know, running at about their speed, they'll try and race them all right. Usually they get tired and have to wave them by. Isn't it great seeing some old racing leathers here? Yeah, um, it, it, there's a lot of memorabilia and, and stuff floating around. Uh, I've got a lot of uh, badges and banners uh, to, to, to go to the function tonight that are associated with the um, Australia-New Zealand tests that were run in the uh, mid-60s through to, you know, there was 65, 66, 67 and 68 where that people travel backwards and forwards New Zealand Australia and I've got a collection of, of memorabilia from that era including a, you know a reefer jacket and goblets and all sorts of things so yeah it's great it gives people an opportunity to bring that sort of stuff out and show it off.
Hey, well, again, on behalf of everybody here, thanks for doing what you did in the last 12 months. We know it's been a lot of work, a lot of stress, but uh, you've made it a reality and it's been a huge success and enjoy that tonight at the function. Well, I most probably won't be there long, but um, yeah, I will. Yeah, thanks. Well, it's great to see the people that come out of the woodwork for this New Zealand Vintage Grand Prix. We're talking with one of our New Zealand motorsport personalities. He's a TV personality as well, Shane Drake. Great to have you here, buddy. It's great to be here. It's, uh, it's fantastic. It's great to see old old faces and, and um, have a get a bit of a fix at the same time. We were just saying that uh, you started at the age of 10 in karting in 1979. Yeah, things have changed a lot, but that gave you a great grounding for your motorsport career. Yeah, look, uh, I mean, uh, I never had a chance because, uh, you know, as a young fellow, my dad did it. So, uh, you know, sort of the age of three or whenever I could walk, I was helping him. So uh, it, it is a great a great grounding for, you know, for moving on and, and doing, um, you know, cars. But it's also, I just can't believe how much fun it is coming back to it again. How long since you've had your bum in one of these vintage cars? Well, I've, I've had this out twice, just really running it in and uh, and just a, a quick run. So this is my first first official meeting. So it's been a long time. Right. Have you done any modern karting anywhere in the last 10 years or so? Uh, I had a run in a, in a Rotax um, some years ago at a bit of a charity thing and, and um, I found it a bit too hard. Um, you know, it wasn't made to fit me so I was a bit wounded but um, apart from that you know, I haven't done anything since um, really the early 90s. You must have some fond memories of your days hanging out with your mum and dad and that going to the kart meetings? Yeah, it's, uh, we grew up with a lot of friends and uh, you know, they're all here today. Had to had to give away the sports, so to speak, you know, rugby and all that sort of thing to 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 follow what we enjoyed and uh, it kept us busy, you know, bloody near on 52 weeks a year. Now you went on to have a full mode of sport career in various classes: Formula Ford, Trans Am, NZV8s. Uh, you filled me on on a couple more. Yeah, we we started obviously in in, um, in Formula Fords and we progressed through to Formula Atlantic and then Formula Holden. Once the Atlantics went, uh, then into Trans Ams in the in the late 90s. Had a bit of a break for a while um, and then come back just as I had a family, which wasn't the best thing in, in the New Zealand V8 touring car. So, um, you know, it's been, been 10 years since I've actively, you know, last race. As for the race car drivers of today to do their grounding in carts, how important was it back then? Well, I think it's very, very important. I mean, cars are a completely different um, uh, discipline, but but it gives you the uh, race craft. You know, you, it teaches you to, to learn how to how to do things pass. Um, but when you get to a car, it is, it is completely different. You know, you got gears to look at, and you got revs to look at. Maybe a little bit more like the modern day cart. You know, but back when you know, like this cart now, it, it, things are, are, are pretty basic. And it's actually quite simple, but but very effective. That's what's great about this vintage Grand Prix. It is going back to grassroots. No computers, nothing like that on these carts. Very simple setups. You don't have as much caster camber and alterations as you have on a modern cart and running the 30 mil axles. Yeah, no, look, it's um, it's very simple. This is this is the same chassis as what I raced with in the early 80s, 1984. It's a, uh, the late um, Raymond Hart built these chassis called a, a DAP Pro 84. And, uh, so it's got it's good history with me, you know, it's like 30 odd, 30 odd years ago I run this this chassis and had a lot of success in it as, as a junior. So very simple, but you know, um, it still does a damn good job. A good shout out there for Raymond. Unfortunately, you know, he passed away just a few short years ago. He would have loved to have been here because this was his era and he was a big personality and a very successful sportsman in kart sport. Yeah, he was and, and, a, and a bloody good bloke to, uh, to go with it and uh, his, his, uh, his uh, uh, wife is, uh, is here this weekend. So it's good to see her and, and holding up the uh, the legacy. But he's uh, he's certainly uh, no, no shortage of talking about him because he's involved in just about everything out here. Mate, I can see a bit of sweat dropping <laughs> off the brow, so it must be hot work out there. It's it's uh, it's hot, and uh, you know it's really just waiting for four o'clock to have a beer with all the boys. <laughs> um, Hawks Bay track. Did you race here back in the day? Yeah, I did, but not on this circuit. Uh, it was the short track. So, and I, I'm trying to think when it was. It was very, very late 80s or even about 1990. So uh, it's quite different. So I actually had to come here and learn it, but that's not too, not too difficult. But uh, interesting corner, uh, way over the back here. You know, separating two straights. It's quite. It's, but it reminds me a bit of a manfield. Uh, the apex is a bit round the corner. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, she's flat out there. I hope you're not lifting. Uh, yes, we are. Yeah, I'm not sure about whether it's. Uh, I don't think it's flat, but uh, I think you'd be scrubbing off too much speed if it, if it was flat. But uh, it's interesting. Now, the drivers that you grew up racing against, a lot of them would have also become your competitors when you moved on to full course racing. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Stitch um, obviously was, and uh, Murph, um, so Reese McKay's here, who you know raced Formula Fords against. So a lot of people here that you know we finished up 
racing with in, in cars, and, and obviously there's a lot of them here that uh, we actually race against in carts as well. Hey, enjoy your weekend. I know you are, and uh, you're only a couple of hours away from that beer, mate. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks very much. Right, we're talking to the number 90 cart here. He's a current New Zealand champion, two-time North Island champion as well. He's actually the current holder of those titles, and you just won a road racing championship as well. What are you doing driving this uh, vintage cart, mate? Well, this is where it all started. This is the roots of cart sport. Um, and, oh, just beautiful hooks by weather. Come down here and have a bit of a fang, really. You love coming here. Love the track, love the weather, and these, are, these old vintage carts are just such a hoot to drive. Tell us a bit about this restoration. Um, so I bought this off a fellow Facebook friend um, probably about four months ago, and it hung on the wall for about three of those months, where I never, never got a chance or a time to restore it. Um, so it's an 86 SL Kiwi cart. Um, so I've basically new chrome work, stripped it, powder coated it, done it all up, um, and put a 1989 Rotex rotary valve engine on that I used to run in Junior National on the side of it, and yeah, go out and have a blast. What, no, it's, I know it's a dirty word here, but what sort of lap times are you running? I actually have no idea. We've got no, we're not allowed lap timers or any sort of data logging equipment um, in, the, in the vintage rules. Um, so I don't actually, ha I don't know yet, but I'm sure someone will be hanging over the fence with a stopwatch later on. Okay, you can tell me off camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a huge weekend, mate. It's all about the socialising aspect of it as well. Everyone can come and talk their stories, but you've got current stories, mate. Yeah, we've got, we've got all sorts of stories. What, what do you want to know? I'll tell you later off camera as well. Yeah, those ones have to be off camera. Hey, enjoy the weekend, man. Have a, have a blast here in Hawke's Bay. And in three weeks' time, you're going to be defending those New Zealand titles. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, out there for the uh, New Zealand Nationals again, and we'll see what we can do. Good luck, Welcome Ryan. once again awesome. to you. day two here for the Linden Estate New Zealand Vintage Grand Prix, the first one ever held here in New Zealand. We're inside the Hawke's Bay Cart Club club rooms. This is where it all happens after race day. Got some great memorabilia around the walls here. First off, I'm going to show you an overview of the track from the 2006 Nationals that were hosted here. You can see the layout of the circuit and how busy it is in the pits here at a New Zealand Championship in New Zealand. Um, we've got lots of great stuff up on the walls. In fact, we're going to have a look at Ashley Stitsbury's picture now as well, the late, great Ashley Stitsbury. Fortunately, uh, he passed away in 2002. He was one of the top junior racers here in New Zealand many years ago. A great montage to a great driver, in fact, who went on to big things in the Trans Am and New Zealand V8 series. Then if you have a look up here, the man that's made this vintage Grand Prix possible, Mark Jenkinson, a former New Zealand champion in the 70s, then a couple of titles back in the 1980s as well. Three great pitches of Mark up here driving the 200cc cart to his national championship, fully sideways like they used to get in the old days. That's why we're here. It's all about... Um, remembering these great old days, the great old carts that are out on the track. Another montage for Ashley Stitchbury, showing the Trans Am cars that he used to race. He was a former New Zealand champion in those Trans Ams. And then if we just pan across the wall there, we've got lots of uh, club day photos, lots of championship trophy photos as well. Poster from the 2000 Nationals that were hosted here as well. That's about the time that I got involved in kart sport racing in New Zealand. And we've even got a photo of our current Hawke's Bay Karting Club president. He's down here a little bit further. He's going to hate me for showing this one. Craig Spargo, running the great moustache there like you used to do in the 80s. He's there with Kane Raisey in the number one cart, winning his New Zealand title back then. Ashley Stitsbury. And if you can't quite recognise who the other guy is there on the other side, that's Greg Murphy. Well, back in a more simpler era for kart sport, before it got a lot more PC, there was such a thing as a black flag. Now, you either got that black flag rolled up or it was unfilled, and that spelt not such a good thing for a driver. This is uh, Graham Spargo, one of the old stewards that we used to have here on club days, and if you uh, received that rolled up black flag, you knew you were in trouble from Graham. He was legendary for pointing that flag. And his son Craig is the current New Zealand, is sorry, the current Hawke's Bay Kart Sport uh, president here. And it's a great photo for a great guy that's still involved in karting as well. Graham now into his 80s, and he's out here this weekend.
Well, it's important for every club rooms to have an honours board, and uh, proudly on this one, we've got a lot of ex-New Zealand champions from Hawke's Bay. As we have looked at the top, right up there in 1975, Mark Jenkinson, and some great names as we pan down this list. I think you might have driven it too hard yesterday. Oh, yeah, it was a lot of fun yesterday, I tell you, and sliding around the corners. It's hard work, the high wheelers on the Tars Hill, but um, it's good to have them out there and the people can see how you know, go-karting actually started. So that's what it's all about, isn't it? And you had a good uh, time at the function last night? Yeah, it was great. It was good to catch up with people and talk to people. And, um, yeah, some of the stories are quite amazing. But, yeah, the amount of people that come out of the woodwork and said, oh, they remember the old high wheelers and, and, and the Villiers motors. And they, they used all sorts of things in those days, of course, whatever you could get. That was the problem. In the 60s, you had to have import licence to do anything. So you couldn't mass produce a lot of, uh, a lot of things. So, um, yeah, it was, it was just, yeah put in what you could get get hold of really where's where the mcculloch came from everyone used to pinch the chains off the father's chainsaw yeah. put them in go racing and then put it back on the, yep. for the for the rest of the week yeah amazing that was the old number eight wire mentality that new zealanders were so well known for but now uh, you can just order off the internet you can just get parts off the shelf oh, it's the same i think all forms of motorsport have gone that way now you don't see the innovation like we used to see so uh, it's a bit of a shame but um hey we had to start somewhere and this is uh, this is the start of it all so you talk about the JAPTQ, and uh, those were the days when they were all home built, and there were some awesome creations back in those days. Oh, that's right, and they started off with Austin 7. Mine's all got Austin 7 running gear. Um, no roll bar, no roll cage, and then had a lap belt. In fact, when he raced it, he didn't even have a seat belt. So, yeah, we have a vintage uh, group of uh, Speedway cars as well, so that's why my overalls do both jobs, so that's why it's got JAP on there. And, um, yeah, we have a lot of fun on that too. It's, it's, the whole vintage movement for everything is awesome, really. You just took the words out of my mouth as I was going to mention that next. The vintage speedway is growing huge. In fact, at Miani Speedway later this season, we're having a 50-year um, reunion for our club, and there's going to be vintage uh, TQs, midgets, and the stock cars. Oh, that'd be great. It'd be good if, uh, yeah, yeah, let us know and we'll come over because if we can bring a contingent over, it's always nice to have a run on a different track. So we but mainly Stratford, and it's it's pretty awesome. We've got quite a few members, so um, I think a few of them have been over to Miani for a, the odd uh, run with their vintage. So, um, yeah, I've got to get the uh, get the JAP going. It's got a spark problem to it at the moment, but I'm, I'm working on that as well. Mate, I love the sound of the JAPs. I actually raced solo bikes myself and started out on a JAP. Too much talk for me, though. Those things were hard to ride. <laughs> yeah, no, they're pretty cool. They're a bit temperamental, um, you know, the old methanol and that, but... Um, yeah, no, once you get them right, they're, they're awesome, awesome, good low-down talking, man. They'll just pull anything, eh? So, good fun. And as long as you can hang the tail out, that's all we want to do. <laughs> hey, enjoy the rest of the day going in the other way. Thanks very much. Cheers. Well, undoubtedly, the trophy for the best-looking jacket here at the Vintage Grand Prix has to go to Adrian wearing this amazing-looking jacket. Adrian, tell us a little bit about it and, and how it came about. There was a team of New Zealanders that were invited to go to a Memphis Grand Nationals in 1974 and I think there were about 22 of us and we all went over there, went to the McCulloch factory, they presented us with the jacket and the hats and since then Graham has put all the patches on it. It's a stunning looking jacket, just do a twirl for us as well so you can have a look at the back, look we got Cart and Supercart magazine, Goodyear, Bridgestone, McCulloch. It's a fantastic looking piece of history. 1974, so it's actually 41 years old now, this jacket. 41 years old, and all the patches are genuine patches. They're all the originals. That, that's got to go in a museum one day, you know. That's something that is absolutely a piece of history. Well, Graham won't wear it because he says that's not the right thing for him to do, but I'm a little bit more cheeky. <laughs> so and I see you've got the New Zealand Cart Federation badge on there, Graham Harrison, the North Island executive. Yeah, that, that was him. And he's got, um, he's got a life membership badge on his, his hat that he's wearing. Well, I like this hat as well. well he, he's got a few badges on my hat, um, but this, this is awesome. I've seen you walking around the pits all weekend with a big smile on your face. How cool is it to be here for this event? Oh, it's awesome. We used to come down here years ago for Blossom. And it was a great event, it was beginning of September, a great family event and karting is a great family sport and you can see all the, 
you know, even the great grandsons are out here now. And I, I think it's, it's incredible. It's much different from any other sport. You're definitely right about that. Great family sport. And once again, I'm jealous of this jacket. I want one. Adrian's got the best looking gear here this weekend at the Vintage Grand Prix.
and leave the track. Hopefully we won't use them. We didn't see the fish today. Okay. If you're now all familiar with the lights, the yellow lights, you know to slow down, please. If you break down, please don't stand on the outside of the corner. It's very dangerous. Apart from that, they're all good. Like yesterday, relive and rekindle the, the fun of yesterday and have fun today. Good luck. Thank you. Can you switch it off? Oh, because there's nobody up there. No. Oh, okay. The first part is quite steep on the track. You can go around to the right hand side of the phone. Come on, the track is What? The lights. It's done from that box, isn't it? Just one observation from yesterday, and I'm not here for the driver's standard, is when we exit the track, particularly in the turning run, please stay on the right hand lane. Going outside this way, the left hand lane. Right, yesterday we had guys cutting each other off, coming off, and, and, and signal please, when you come off, particularly in the tuning runs, because guys are coming off at different stages, okay? And obviously you're going up a lot slower. Just in terms of our safety, our fire extinguishers guys are where they were yesterday, outside the deep shed, uh, up in the, the scales, and you come in, over there by the, by the start stand, there's one at the heaven as well, and there's one here. Um, I like to all you put your hands up, who had a great day yesterday? Whee! Hey, I've got nothing more to say.